A common issue that I run into my practice as a board certified dermatologist and acne expert is why isn't my acne getting better? In this video, I want to break down some common reasons why acne isn't improving as much as we hope and go over some solutions to these. Now, the first reason would be that this isn't acne, that these bumps on the face might be due to something else. And the reason acne treatments aren't working is because we're not treating the right thing. And some common things that can look like acne but aren't would be pitiosporum folliculitis. This is where sometimes called fungal acne, where we have an overgrowth of a normal yeast on our skin called pitiosporum. It gets in the follicles. And in contrast to regular acne, these bumps tend to be smaller, very similar, like they all almost look exactly the same, and they can often be itching. And this often responds better to antifungal treatments than to traditional acne treatments. Another common mimicker that can be confused for acne is perioral dermatitis. This can be characterized by these small bumps that can be red, sometimes even little pus bumps, often around the mouth, nose, and eyes. There's usually some sort of a trigger, like use of topical steroids or other irritants that contributes to this problem. And in contrast to acne, these tend to be localized more around these kind of nose, mouth, eyes areas. They can sometimes be a bit more itchy than what we'd expect in acne. And they don't tend to have comedons, so whiteheads and blackheads that we see in acne. The third common mimicker of acne is rosacea where we have these red or inflamed bumps, sometimes pustules, often on the cheeks. And there can usually be some redness or broken blood vessels called telangiectasia that go along with them. Similar to perioral dermatitis, we don't tend to see comedones. We don't see those whiteheads and blackheads. So overall, a really key thing that differentiates acne from other problems is the presence of comedone. If there's whiteheads and blackheads, that suggests that it is acne, but if those are not present, if there are no whiteheads and blackheads, then we really should be thinking about other mimickers that might look like acne but aren't. The fourth one would be something called sebaceous filaments, and these can sometimes be considered blackheads or acne on the nose. And what differentiates them from acne is they tend to be smaller, they tend to be all exactly the same, and they tend to be very regularly spaced, almost like a grid, as opposed to sort of the more random distribution that we can see with acne blackheads. And this problem is actually, it's not acne, it's an accumulation of just sebaceous materials in our normal pores. And the strategies here, and I go through them in other videos, tend to be more oriented around getting these sebaceous materials out of the pores and helping to reduce the production of them. But let's say it is acne and it's still not getting better. What are some common causes of that issue? Well, one of the first ones is spot treating. Our acne treatments, they tend to work best as preventing future acne. So we wanna use them in the whole areas that we tend to get acne and we wanna be consistent with them. Using them in a reactive manner or putting them on the breakouts as they happen, some of them can help make breakouts get better faster, but it's really not gonna help improve acne in the long run. And so we really do need to be using things over the whole area and we need to use, be using them patiently. It takes at least eight to 12 weeks to know if any acne treatment is working. So we wanna treat the whole area, it's not spot treating, we wanna be consistent and we wanna be patient. Another issue that can arise is not combining multiple mechanisms of action. And the reason this is so important is that most acne treatments, they do help, but they only help so much. And often we need to combine together some different treatments that are going to complement each other to be able to get acne to clear. And so this could be using things like topical retinoids or retinols, which are going to help get rid of inflammation, help keep pores from getting clogged and help the skin and dark marks turn over with things like benzoyl peroxide, which is going to help kill acne bacteria and help reduce inflammation. Things like salicylic acid that can help pores from getting clogged. Things like topical antibiotics that can kill acne bacteria. And then things like topical quascoderone, which is an anti-anergen, which can help to reduce the effects of hormones in both men and women in the skin that contribute to acne. So making sure that we combine things that can work together as a team is often a really important part of achieving acne clearance. And related to this, a lot of times I see people who are, instead of using things that combine multiple mechanisms of action, we're just using a lot of things that are kind of in the same category. A whole bunch of different products that might have things like retinols or salicylic acid, that instead of complementing each other, they're actually getting in each other's way because they're causing irritation. Sometimes using too many products that are in the same category, rather than getting extra benefits, can actually start to hurt the skin barrier, can cause too much irritation and this irritation and skin barrier dysfunction can actually perpetuate and worsen acne. So while we do wanna make sure we're combining multiple mechanisms of action, 
And we also want to make sure that we're keeping things simple and we're not using too many products in the same category that are going to get in each other's way and cause too much irritation and other problems. Now, as I alluded to earlier, consistency is hugely important when it comes to acne treatment. Consistency beats intensity every day of the week. And so if we're using a regimen that's too intense and it's causing irritation, we have to keep taking breaks from it. This often happens with topical retinoids where we really want to get rid of the acne, so we just use it daily or we use a lot of it or a strong one. Stronger isn't necessarily better here. More isn't necessarily better here. If we're causing irritation to the skin, from overusing products or using products that are too strong or starting too quickly, that's not gonna help us achieve our goals. So having patience and consistency is critically important. As I mentioned, it's gonna take eight to 12 weeks to know how well something's working. So make sure we introduce things slowly and gradually so our skin can get used to them. Make sure that we don't necessarily use something that's stronger than what our skin can handle. Stronger, again, isn't always better here. Having something that's tolerable and that we can do consistency is really the name of the game. And then finally, for some people, the acne not getting better can just be a sign that we need stronger treatment. Some acne can just be more difficult to treat, and it might even need pill medications like oral antibiotics, oral kind of anti-androgen hormonal therapy strategies like combined oral contraceptives or spironolactone, or even medications like isotretinoin, Accutane, or other acne treatments. So if acne is not getting better, sometimes it means we need to step up our game from a treatment standpoint and think about some of these options. So to summarize, if acne is not getting better, we want to consider a few different things. The first is that it might not be acne, that it might be something that looks like acne, but is different and requires a different treatment. And if there's ever uncertainty, it's important to work together with our healthcare team to figure that out. The second thing is making sure that we're not spot treating. Acne treatments really work best at preventing our future acne. So we want to use them in the whole areas that we tend to get acne and we want to be consistent. The third thing is making sure that we're using multimodal therapy, that we're using different treatments that work in different ways and can complement each other, rather than sometimes using too many treatments in one strategy where we can create irritation or side effects that actually can make acne worse. The fourth thing is making sure that we're consistent and have enough patience. It really does take eight to 12 weeks for any acne treatment to work. And so we're gonna have to be patient about them. We wanna make sure that we start them gradually and cautiously so we don't cause too much irritation initially and then work our way up over time. And then the final thing is just sometimes we need a stronger treatment. The reason things aren't getting better, it's not because we're doing something wrong or using the wrong products. We just need a stronger treatment and might be even a pill treatment that we need to get things under control. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like so we can share it with more in the community and subscribe to the channel. Your support really means a lot to me and it's what allows me to make these videos. Ask me your questions about acne in the comments below and share your thoughts about what are some common things that can make it hard for acne to get better and what solutions that you found. Until next time, see ya.